The world's oceans are a vast and mysterious expanse, and beneath their surface lurks an invisible armada. Right now, at this very moment, an unknown number of submarines, stealthy, silent, and armed with the most advanced weaponry ever devised, are gliding through the depths. From nuclear-powered ballistic missile-armed submarines capable of wiping entire cities off the map, TOTAC subs stalking their targets from the darkness of the ocean floor, ready to cripple their enemy's surface operations. These vessels operate in a realm beyond civilian sight and often beyond accountability. Just last year, a Russian Kilo-class submarine was detected inside of the Philippines' exclusive economic zone and had to be escorted out by the Philippines' navy. Every major naval power maintains a fleet of these submarines, and every major naval power has invested billions of dollars into detecting and destroying these dangerous machines. This technological battle is coming Toei 4 in the seas surrounding Taiwan, where China is currently building what is being dubbed the Second Great Wall of China. The Great Underwater Wall of China. This wall isn't designed to stop the advance of Mongol hordes, but designed to detect and locate even the stealthiest of submarines. One of many new technologies being deployed around the world to even the battlefield against these powerful submarines. Since 2016, China has been operating Tunda water sensors, one located in the deepest point on Earth, Challenger Deep, and another off the coast of Yap, Micronesia, both within earshot of America's farthest flung military outposts in the Pacific, Ocean, Guam, and directly on the path through one of the primary entry points into the South China Sea. These sensors have been tracking U.S. naval movements for nearly a decade, and that program is being expanded to cover the entire maritime borders of China to ensure submarines cannot enter Chinese territory without being detected, something that could cripple an amphibious invasion of Taiwan before it even started. This Great Wall of Acoustic Sensors are currently being installed at an estimated cost of $300 million, and China has not been shy about sharing the new capability. With videos of the installation process and scaled models of the system being shown off on national Chinese news, each of these devices that we saw fiber optic cables being attached Toby and ROV is a sonar array. These are active devices that send pulses of sound out and wait for a return signal, with three of them being attached to a primary gateway, allowing them to precisely triangulate the position of anything within range. The system also incorporates hydrophones, passive detection that simply listens for intruders. While nations around the world have spent billions developing ultra-quiet submarine technologies, this system prevents an enemy from being able to locate. The sensors through those sonar pings, which are audible to their target. Each cluster of acoustic sensors are estimated to have around a 160-kilometer range, and China is expanding that system to cover every entry path into the South China Sea. The system is powered through cables linked to onshore facilities, delivering 10 kilovolts of high-power direct current, while each of the sensors are connected by optical fibers, allowing data to be quickly shared and analyzed. Incredibly, there also appears to be a charging dock incorporated for an underwater drone, which may be for system maintenance, but could easily be used to power autonomous drones designed to attack submarines. One of the many areas of technological development under focus by naval powers around the world, but more on that later. This is a massive undertaking. This scale model depicts the system as it was installed and tested off the southern coast of Hainan, which is also one of China's primary submarine pens and vital part of their force projection in the South China Sea. Detecting a submarine is simply the first part of countering them, and there are many more ways of unmasking these machines as they lurk below the surface. Sound isn't the only way. This is the Lockheed P-3 Orion, one of the primary tools in the United States submarine hunting arsenal, and one of the few planes in the United States military that has been in service for over 50 years. It can carry a huge range of anti-submarine weapons like the Mark 50 torpedo. It was specifically designed to attack deep diving submarines and its primary design feature to allow it to complete this task is its propulsion system, Reef. We need a high energy density power source to achieve the speeds and range needed for a weapon like this. But there's one major problem for a device designed 
to dive to the extreme depths that submarines dwell in. The pressure outside the torpedo continually rises, and eventually that pressure is going to be higher than the exhaust pressure of the engine. This can be solved by actively pumping the exhaust out, but there is a more elegant solution. Storing the exhaust products on board. For most combustion engines, this is a recipe for disaster, but with the right reactants it can work. The torpedo is powered by a lithium fuel and a sulfur hexafluoride oxidizer. A highly unusual fuel oxidizer combination, but they have one critical property. The volume of the products of combustion is smaller than the volume of the reactants, allowing them to be stored on board without any pressure build up. The reaction occurs inside a boiler, where the heat generated is used to generate steam, which drives the propeller. The steam is then driven to a condenser mounted on the outside surface of the torpedo, where it can be cooled by the surrounding water rushing, by and then returned to the boiler as liquid water. This system also means the torpedo does not have an exhaust wake, making it harder to detect. However, the P6P3 is rarely used in an offensive manner. Its primary role is in reconnaissance, and one of its most distinguishable features is this huge pole sticking out of the rear stabilizer. This is a magnetic anomaly detector. It searches for the tiniest disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field. The hull of a typical submarine is made out of ferrous materials that become magnetized by the Earth's magnetic field. This induced magnetic field then disrupts the relatively constant distribution of the naturally occurring magnetic fields. There are a couple of methods to measure magnetic field anomalies like this. We have quantified the strange induced magnetic. Fields off Europa using a fairly simple magnetometer. It consists of a base coil wrapped around a metallic ring core. On one half of the ring, the wire coils clockwise, and on the other half, it is wrapped counterclockwise. Another measuring coil is placed on top of this ring to measure the magnetic field running through the core. Without an external magnetic field, the magnetic field generated by these opposing coils would cancel each other out. But when placed inside a magnetic field, the core has a slight bias in the external field's direction. This can be sensed by the outer windings and measured as an electric current, F, slide 4. Allowing us to detect magnetic fields with precision, but not enough precision to detect a submarine. For that, we need a device with an incredibly high sampling rate and sensitivities, as long as 0.001 nano Tesla, 50 million times weaker than the Earth's magnetic field of 50 micro Tesla. RF. To measure this, we take advantage of light and its interaction with helium atoms. Helium atoms interact with infrared light at a precise wavelength of 1085 nanometers. When a helium cell is placed between a laser of that wavelength and a photodiode, the atoms absorb the light and jump to a higher energy level. As they relax, they emit light in random directions, reducing the amount that reaches the detector. But this changes when the atoms are exposed to a magnetic field. Their energy levels split into three with the energy gap between them depending on the strength of the magnetic field. This is known as the Zeeman effect. Now, when the laser shines on the helium, atoms can still be excited, but as they relax, they may fall into any of the three levels. The key is that the 1085 NEM laser can only excite atoms from the middle level. Eventually, the laser depletes that level, leaving fewer atoms able to absorb the light. As a result, the helium cell becomes transparent, a condition called the optically pumped state. To measure the magnetic field, we add a radio frequency pulse tuned to the energy gap between the levels. This pulse repopulates the middle level, letting atoms absorb the laser light again. This results in a dip in the detected light, but only when the pulse's frequency matches the energy gap. At the average Earth's magnetic field of 50,000 nanoteslas, the corresponding frequency is 1.40 mert. At 5,100 nanoteslas, it's slightly higher at 1.43 millihertz. 
By constantly sweeping the frequency and observing when light intensity drops, we can precisely determine the magnetic field strength perpendicular to the helium laser axis. With three detectors aligned along the E, X, Y and Z axes, we can map the magnetic field in three dimensions. However, even with this technology, it's not easy detecting a magnetic field anomaly this small. The ASQ-81 magnetometer is typically housed in a boom or tail stinger extending from an aircraft to minimize interference from the aircraft's own magnetic field. Chances increase drastically the closer the detector is to the object causing the anomaly, so deeper diving submarines are much harder to detect. Because of this, the P-3 is most effective at low altitudes, forcing it to fly at 500 feet or lower, while it follows a systematic grid search pattern. This is a useful tool that appears in every large Navy arsenal, but for every military technology that develops, a counter is also developed. Not all metals are ferromagnetic. Titanium is diamagnetic, meaning it has an extremely weak effect on magnetic fields. So building a submarine out of 